there's so many holy months, um, like Mount Sinai, Mount of Olives, and one of the most, if not the most important one, is the Golgotha Hill, which is the creation of Christianity. Jesus was supposed to be crucified on it, to take all our sins with him and resurrect. And that's happened here. Before we will enter to that church, I want you to understand that there are two options. There's another option outside the walls of Jerusalem, not so far away from here. It's called the Garden Tomb. It's owned by the Church of England. And they actually say that the church I mean, the, the crucifixion place in the gold that must be outside the city, just like the Bible mentioned, and just just like the Jewish tradition was, because Jews have not been buried inside the, uh, the city, which is true. But that place was outside the city 2,000 years ago. Remember, we are we are uh, dealing with a city um, that looks a little bit different than than uh, the time of Jesus. Uh, the church itself was built by St. Helen at the 4th century. Before that, uh, it used to be a quarry, and later on we will see it, of King Herod, and quarry is always out of the city. And when King Herod died, um, everyone took the place, the Roman took a big part of it, um, but they just use it as a um, burial site, you know, if you already if you use it as a quarry, then why not to do that? Um, then there are tombs here from the time of Jesus. The tomb of Jesus that you will see looks a little bit different. Mainly, oh, because of um, of uh, it been destroyed so many times. But I just entering the church because it's uh, a ceremony that I really love. And for that, I will go as quickly as I can to the place that uh, we found the true cross, and this is the quarry. And I can smell the incense, and don't worry, we will, we will do the same tour, but in a different way. Here you can see uh, the Armenian. Yeah, the Armenian is, uh, uh, was waiting for the Greek Orthodox monk to come uh, with the incense and we will go to the lowest place in the church to welcome the, another monk from the ceramic church later on. Oh, you have to smell it. This is an Armenian chapel. We will deal with it soon, but we are heading to the lowest place in the, of the church uh, together with the Armenian um, monk. Oh, the incense. Oh, gosh, I love it. started from the lowest place of the church. We saw the Greek Orthodox monk. Um, we saw the Armenian monk. And now we are waiting for another monk to come. But before that, you can see that that was part of the quarry that King Herod used. And then one day he died. And uh, people started to use that place as different thing. Now, there's no water in Jerusalem. And for so many years, they use it as a water system. You can see the bucket hole right here. And you can see the plaster all over. Here you can see how thick it is. Then at the here, at the fourth century, they started to build a church. Before that, the Romans built here a temple, a Roman temple, a pagan temple. 
And then when Constantine converted the, the um, emperor to Christianity, they, uh, um, they uh, uh, built the church. And St. Helen in 335 came to here to bless it. I'm putting it here, and I will talk about it later on, because I want the, the ceramic monk to bless it for us. And he is coming soon, here he is, and he is always smiling. Yeah, he's blessing our crosses. I love that man. The, um, here in the lowest place of the church, St. Helen found the three crosses. She found the true cross. It was right here, and that is, I think, how I met Beth. EJ, correct me if I'm wrong. And this is, you know, the best place to bless some other people of us, but before that, at the exact spot that we found the true cross, I must tell you that if you want to have your own crosses, and I have your own cross, and I do have different kind of crosses, just go into the link at, link of buy me a coffee at the description of that video, and push the button and you will understand how to do that. If not, uh, write me a message via YouTube, via uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and I will send you the link. Um, although we are blessing um, the doctor, Budin Rudovsky, uh, what about um, Andy, Anna, Tony, which are the children of his? And one more thing I will ask you to do, if you can do that with me. Uh, the doctor is um, from Ukraine. He lives in America, but I'm sure he's got family there. Let's pray right here, right now, that the war between Russia and Ukraine will, be, will stop. I just tell you about the school that's been bombed by the Russian, with a lot of hundreds of people that have hide themselves there, then let's hope that nothing actually happened to them at the place that they found the true cross. Can we do that for him? Can we do that for Ukraine? Yes, we can. Ooh, some pe so many people are arriving. Then, let's leave. That is this. Hello. Here you can see fresco of Jesus and Mary and John, but we are running away from the noise and climbing up. Remember, it's like this is the lowest, lowest part of the church. And let me show you the difference, the gap, the border between the Catholic and the Armenian. Now, this is Armenian chapel. Then everyone knows that this is Armenia. Even the colors here are part of the national flag of, of uh, Armenia. But the border is right here. Can you see the small cross? This is the Catholic place. Then in that case, let me point it. From here, all the way down, it's Catholic. That church belongs to everyone. Then, in that case, there's so many things uh, to see here. There's so many things to talk about, but I'm not going to do that for five hours, although I can. Let's go into the altar, mainly because it's open. We are talking about Armenia, and always when we are talking about Armenia, uh, we are, I'm thinking about Dina that works in the Armenian quarter, and I think about Ruby, another subscriber that 
became very close friends. All the subscribers are part of my family. According to what they believe, this is the, um, the set, or at least the area that uh, um, St. Helen, uh, when she came, she actually used. Another important thing, and sadly it's closed, is down there. That will lead you to the second century church, and, and uh, sorry, second century Roman temple. And we found there a graffiti of a boat that we say we came to visit you, our Lord. And in that case, it might be the oldest um, evidence for the church itself. Look at the beautiful views, the Armenian uh, cross. It looks like flowers at the edge. I've been in Armenia, but Armenia of today is not like a it's not as Armin as it used to be. Uh, you can see here at the floor, some places that used to be by uh, part of Armenia, but now most of them have been destroyed by the Ottomans. And I 15, 1.5 million Armenians were butchered by the Ottomans, the Turkish of today, which is so sad for me. Remember, let's stop the war. There's no reason to have war at all at all. And now the Armenian monk came and closed that place. Thanks God that we could enter to here. And the Armenian were the first um, country that was converted to Christianity. Not a lot of people know it, but in 301, um, the king of, of Armenia, you can see that we can see in the water was baptized together with all the country with all the armenians you can see his clothes royal clothes there then in that case they came to jerusalem many years before uh, constantine and selham came here there's a wonderful history of the armenian in um, uh, in Jerusalem. That's why they do have their own quarter and that's why they have a lot of places in this beautiful church. Let's climb up to your right, to your left. You can see two walls. One of them is from 11th century. The other one is from the 12th century. Um, you can see some graffitis on the wall. Some of them are of Crusaders, some of them are not. Then the way we started the tour, <laughs> uh, because of the uh, incense procession, uh, not as it's supposed to be, but it's good because you can see different things. When Jesus was waiting for his trial, the Greek Orthodox here believes that he sat on that granite column and they actually laughed at him, mocked him. And here is it above it. Then we are dealing today with the Greek Orthodox tour. And here it is. Doctor, I'm here for you. And a vet is such an important, must be important, or different, unique person, mainly because, you know, to deal with human, to cure them, you can talk with them. Um, with animals, you need more than that to understand what's happening to them. And for me, this is such an important thing. Now, because we started from the lowest place in the, um, in the church, let us continue with the story from a different perspective. Here you can see the lower part of the Calvary. 
the Golgotha Hill, which we we'll soon we can climb on it. But this is the lower part of it. This is Adam Chapel. EJ, Dr. Rodowski, I'm blessing you here. What you can see right there is a creek from the earth week that happened almost, let's say, in about an hour, um, around three o'clock, when Jesus died. And according to the Bible, so many people uh, resurrected. According to the Greek Orthodox, one of them was Adam himself, Adam and Eve. Then this is the chapel of Adam, the first man ever. Uh, before you will ask me, oh come on, what's happened to him in the flood? I mean, he, he, he died before Noah in the flood. And according to tradition, he was buried in heaven and then after the flood, he still moved to here. Uh, and let's accept it. In that place, which is usually closed, there is a piece, a small relic from the true cross itself. You can actually enter to the, my videos, and uh, it's a very popular video on my YouTube channel. Did you already subscribe my channel? No? Sure? Then, we're going to go out from Adam Chapel, but here, beneath it, you can find tombs of kings, of crusader kings, kings who've been here together with other tombs which are beneath that wall. Now let's talk about this story. What we can actually see in the church. It's like we are starting the tour only now. It's already 19 minutes from the beginning of the video. That is the Golgotha Hill and Golgotha. That name is appear only at the New Testament. The Jews never mentioned that place. Uh, the Romans never mentioned a place by that name. But it might be a place of crucifixion and so many skulls could be found here because you crucify people. Um, it might be that it looks like, a, looks like a skull, two eyes and a nose. And you can see that it actually behind, I mean outside the city. Together with Jesus, you can see Mary Magdalene, that now anointing the hand of Jesus. Mary, the mother, next to his face. Um, Johanna, the other Mary, the mother of, of the uh, sons of baby. And, um, and of course, Joseph of Ramitia and Nactibinus. Those two were Jews just like the others, but um, they had a connection with Pontus Pilate. I mean, they actually went to, to him and asked for the body of Jesus. Well, it's like me going to Mr. Trump and ask him to, I don't know, to do something, or me to go to my prime minister. I mean, it shows you that he, they were very famous uh, to him and uh, he listened to them. Then in that case, the Golgotha is above us. That is the exit of it, the Greek Orthodox exit. And we're gonna climb up first to the Golgotha Hill itself. The Golgotha Plaza belongs to the Catholic and the Greek Orthodox. We are very close to Easter. It's such an important video. We entered to the Catholic part of the church, and soon we're gonna we will enter to the Greek Orthodox part. In the Catholic part, you can see so many things. Uh, that's where they nailed Jesus into the tomb. You can see here the mother, Mary Magdalene, and the Roman soldier. Jesus wasn't 
crucified by the Jews. And you must understand it. I know that you will argue with me. Jesus was crucified by only one power who could do that. The Romans. You can blame the Jews, you can blame whatever you want. It's not true. The Jews were against Jesus, just like they were against so many other people who were so Judaism in a different way. Maybe they want him to die, but the one who crucified him, the only one who could do that were the Romans, and that's why you can see a Roman soldier that nailed Jesus into the cross. Next to the crucifixion, you can see the John, the disciple. John is always without a beard, beardless. He was the beloved young man. And remember the Bible mentioned many women that were there. Can be the other Mary, the mother of uh, uh, sons of this baby, Johanna and so many others. Uh, it's such a beautiful mosaic floor. Now, all the mosaics here are new. Let's say from 1808 and up. It tells you the story from the end. You can see the South of Sunday until the beginning of the oldest. I know, I understand. Adam, yeah. Eve, Abraham. Yeah. Um, the prophets. The only old mosaic is above us. That is the resurrection of Jesus. You see the ascension, sorry, the ascension of Jesus. Now the ascension is not part of the church. The church is not about the ascension, but it actually tells us what next will be. Resurrection, and then the ascension. Next to it, still at let's let's bless your two crosses here, Doctor and EJ. You should get well. I know what I'm talking. You can do that. Be healthy. Um, Betty needs you. She loves you so much. I know it. I can, I'm talking with her a lot. And, um, oh, Betty, stop crying. EJ, hug her. And um, next to her, it, you see the Pieta. That is where um, Mary, I mean, think about the mother. She knew almost for day one that the sun will die in front of her eyes. It's happened that when they visit the temple, and San Simon told her that it will be like a spear will end up to her heart. And that is there, and you can see Mary with a spear in her heart. Next to it is the Greek Orthodox Chapel. Let's stand in the line, and in the Greek Orthodox Chapel, you can see the crucifixion spot. To the right, John the disciple, remember beardless, to the left mother, and when he was on the cross, he asked John to take care of his mother. This is amazing. He is suffering and still thinking about his mother. And here you can see the Golgotha itself. Ceremony. Let's see. Two points. Oh, that's heavy. The only bread is here. Yeah, and 
To something I want to bless it for you, but I want to see what he's doing too. I never saw that ceremony. See it and then to put a to see it too. It must be symmetric. Right. Looks like it's going to take time. And I will arrive later on to bless it at the crucifixion place. But that was too much for me to. Um, and then here it is. Oh, the, of course, it always happens when I decided to leave, then everything is. And then they started the procedure. No, never mind, we, I will climb up. Good for my activity. Now, let's go out from the exit. Now, we already did that. We saw the Calvita, Calvary. And that's where they purified his body. As a Jew, they had to bury him before sunset, and that's why um, Joseph of Remitia back to get his body. And here, you can see that they're purifying his, his uh, um, 
body, they are preparing uh, the body for the um, burial. Um, well, I want to say before the end of the day, it's before sunset according to the Jews. Then here you can see Joseph of Ramitia and Nactiminus, John the disciple, Mother Mary, the women, and Mary Magdalene. See a lot of women, remember there were a lot of women. How many men? How many disciples? One. And then they put the linen around his body and they bury him right here in the tomb, in the cave. Now, that place, the anointing table, is right there. For me, this is a, such an important place to bless the crosses that I bought for you, the doctor and EJ, mainly because that is where the naked body of Jesus touched. Mm -hmm. Got it. Then, in that case, let's find us a place. Not easy. You can see everyone who bought something. Bless it there. I mean, let's face it, though it's Jerusalem, you can buy it uh, in your country, but to bless it here, this is the difference. Then let's wait. Today we're going to wait a lot, and thanks God the tourists are here. Ah, maybe from there. No. We'll have to wait patiently. What the ladder is doing here, remember there's so many debates between the different Christians of a nation who owns what, and when they agree about the status quo, uh, that ladder was here. Then the ladder is here from, I think it was from Wednesday hash and until Pentecost. No one used it, but it's because of the uh, because of uh, the status quo, it will be here. And there's so many, so many stories like that. All right, let's bless it here. <laughs> it smells amazing. Some of my subscribers bought a the yeah, crosses actually wrote me that they still can smell the anointing oil. We are going through the um, Armenian chapel, remember they have a lot, and that's where I have the candles for you uh, early morning to the tomb. Now we are waiting to see a tomb that looks like a cave. But there's no cave here, isn't it? Mainly because that tomb been destroyed a few times. That the structure, the adicula that you see here, is uh, from uh, 19th century, and they renovated it lately. And if we are talking about that, they are now mapping all the floors here, all the floor here, and soon they will open it and renovated it. The Greek Orthodox, the Catholic, the Armenian agree to do that. Alleluia for that. Then it will be better when they, uh, after they will excavate belief to see what's happening there. And I will show you where they already started doing it. I won't be able to enter with um, the crosses to the tomb, yeah, sorry. I will be able to do that, but I won't be able to, to enter with, a, with my video. Then uh, later on, just like I, I will bless your uh, crosses at the crucifixion place, the exact part of the, cru of the crucifixion, I will reach that the tomb, I will wait in the line and bless it for you, but that will be after we will say goodbye. Um, I'm just waiting for the tour guide to leave the place, though I cannot go in because it's closed. 
um, Dr. Rudovsky, I want you to see um, the main Greek Orthodox cathedral. Then this is it. Let's place the crosses in the Greek Orthodox Cathedral. You can see the wall of icons in front of you. But the most important thing here is the second table. That is where we, what we believe is the center of the world, according to the Greek Orthodox. Sadly, it's clo mostly closed, um, but at least you can actually see it. And though we cannot go into the tomb of Jesus okay. now, I, okay. then in that case, although we cannot go, we cannot enter now to the tomb, we will. Oh, wow. Look at the line. If you look at my videos, uh, let's say two weeks ago, not two months ago, you could see that I could be the only one there. But never mind, this is 10 minutes. Waiting in line, that's not a bad idea. Um, and when in uh, two years ago, just before COVID, you have to wait four hours just to reach it. Remember, we talked about caves. Let's look at the cave. Oh, the two, I'm copying the two tourists. Uh, two guys. Um, before we will enter, this is the tomb. We know that, let's assume that it was a cave. That was a cave, a tomb, I mean, yes, Joseph of Ramatia gave Jesus a tomb that no one used before. And if that wasn't used before, then what, what was used before? We're entering into a chapel that doesn't look like the best or the one million dollar chapel. Look how hmm, bad situation it is. That's mainly because they still argue who owns that place. Is it belong to the um, Cyrenic Church or Armenian or Coptic? Until they will reach out, uh, who owns it, it will be like that. Now, the wall that you see here is from 4th century, built by, uh, by uh, St. Helen and Constantine. And um, it used to be covered with marble. You can see the holes that used to hold the marble. That was the system, which is, I think, the same system of today. And in that place, you can see so many holes. Something special was here. It was decorated more beautifully than others. Then, what it is? Let that man, let him go out. But I, now I can tell you that this is a tomb of a family. rock cared tomb. rock cut tomb. Uh, remember that it was a quarry and then people use it. We are uh, looking at uh, the garden of Joseph of Hermitia, that according to the book of John, John 19, it was just next to the tomb, uh, sorry, to the crucifixion place. That's why the tomb and uh, the, um, the tomb and the crucifixion area, the Kolkata, is under the same roof. Now he's still there and I to continue, I'm using the light. Can you see the niches in it? Now you can see. You can see two niches, but there are five. And um, when the two used to be buried, we know already that it was before uh, sunset for the uh, day ends. And we know that, um, that you have to bury them the same day. Then here there are five niches. It's called Kuchim in Hebrew, and actually in English as well, but it's a terrible word to remember. Uh, what will happen to the six men? The six man is, um, there's no place for him. Oh, poor dead man. Damn it, it is. Let, uh, let me put the crosses. 
and let's use the flashlight. Now I can see it. Then what usually they did, they opened the koch, the niche there, and they took the buns out and they put some, and they put it in a small box by the name Osri, put the Osri in the storeroom, and then they could bur uh, bury um, someone else instead. Let me enter for just a minute, and you can see that some of the kuchin, the dishes are still closed. For example, that one, that one, and that one. Spooky. Then, whose tomb it is and why no one destroy it? What we believe is that Joseph of Ramitia, well, what the Bible actually told us, Joseph of Ramitia gave Jesus his own tomb that no one touched before. We saw it. And I'm sure that he built himself another tomb in, uh, next to his master. Then, Nakdimunus, Joseph of Ramitia, and his family. Look at the graffiti here. Hmm. What can I tell you? Do you think that that's the end of the tour? Forget it. It's only 43 minutes. We have at least a few more places to visit. Before I will enter to the tomb and, and uh, before I will bless it at a crucifixion spot. Did you subscribe my channel? Yes? Then another important place for me. This is where Mary Magdalene, according to the Catholic, so, Jesus on Sunday, Mary was standing right here, Jesus was standing right there. It looks like it's, we are very close to four o'clock and the ceremony in the Catholic part will begin. There, when you see the stop, Stuff only. They already started to excavate beneath the floor to find evidence of the old church and sadly cannot see it. There are so many things to see. It will take a lot of time. I want to see it. Let's see what is beneath us. Let's put our camera up here. Oh, no, we cannot see it. Sorry, I tried. Can we see something? You can see that they already took out three of those stones. Da -da -da. This is. This is really something that was... Oh, I can see it from, I can get it from there. I don't know what you could see, but I hope that you can see something. Later on, when I reach my house, I will look at it. You know that I must check everything. That's why, that's why I'm a tour guide. I need to know what's happening. Now you are looking at it. And I don't know what you're looking at, maybe because it's too difficult for me to see. They had a ceremony like uh, two a week ago with all with a Greek Orthodox, uh, um, Armenian, and and a Catholic monk. Let's see what we can see from the other side. Then, you know what we see? Oh, 
you see the other side there. You see that? I saw some people walking there. Where's the exit? The exit? Yes. Uh, you can go through the tomb, which is there, or that way. We went to the tomb already. Did now. you see the tomb? Yes. Then let me stop the video. They wanted to know where is the exit, and I must help them. That's me. Here, another Greek Orthodox chapel, and this is the prison of Christ. You know, when they took him from the judgment place to here, he wasn't crucified immediately. They had to wait a little bit. Then, um, this is the chapel. They are looking at a kind of a um, jail, prison. Not to before that, this is the chapel that I want to bless those two crosses. And me and Betty, Betty loves that figure of Jesus right here. <clears throat> Let's go out. This is how they did it according to what they believe. You can see the icon. The legs of Jesus were in those two holes, and it was tied in this end to the columns, and waiting for the crucifixion to come. Not easy. Soon you will see that we reach the same area that we already visit, <coughs> but one another option to see is beneath there. You can see it, I don't, I cannot see it fully yet. I'm going to reach out my own. You see that they must renovate it, that. And, and, and it will be very beautiful that they will actually excavate everything beneath another uh, Greek Orthodox chapel of the spear. Difficult for me to show to you. Let me see if, I, if it will help a little bit. Not a lot, but you can see a little bit of it. Minion Chapel, and we started the tour there. When we made the round tour, it took us only 50, 51 minutes, but I think Dr. Um, Anita, you saw a lot of the church. Now you know a lot as well. The rest, you can be part of my family if you will subscribe my channel. And I will be more than happy if you need to ask me questions. Please do that. Mary, uh, it's like a Easter soon. And please, if you reach that point, I will be more than happy if you will write me that you did it. Thank you very much. Uh, there are much more to talk about the church, but I think we saw a, a lot in uh, one long, beautiful video. And thank you very much, my friends. It's, I think, March 20, 2022. It's cold outside, but the energy is so strong. And thank you very much. Bye-bye.